Hey guys, this is Pixel Dan coming to you from the NECA Toys booth at the 2016 New York Toy Fair. And I'm here with my friend Randy Falk to talk about all the new stuff you guys have on display. How's it going, Randy? It's going good. Yeah. The show is off to a great start. Off to a great start. So you have some incredible things that I've already seen a little bit of, so I thought maybe you can walk us through it all. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's start with some of the big surprises. All right. Uh, Ninja Turtles. Oh my gosh, you're doing Ninja Turtles. We are. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's uh, one we've kept very uh, secret. We did some turtle stuff a few years back, mm -hmm. and uh, people as well as ourselves have been dying to get back into that world and uh, do more. So uh, here at Toy Fair, we're debuting the quarter scale 1990 Henson movie turtle. So we're doing all four. There'll be new one each quarter. We have uh, Donatello on display here. Um, we'll be showing you more as the year progresses. Um, and I can say that we are doing a lot more than that, I just can't say anything specifically at this time. You can't say anything specific, but I'm gonna go ahead and like start making suggestions. Um, are, are, is it possible to even see anything below the quarter scale? Or I know that there's like a master license with like playmates and right. stuff that would prevent things like that. Um, but I know people are gonna ask, so I figure. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's quite possible you'll see some stuff below that uh -huh. and above it. Oh, okay. And how about on that video game front? Any uh, any movement there? Uh, you know I'm a big fan of that, so uh, that might be something. I can't confirm. You can't confirm it. See, I'm just poking them now. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Well, it's exciting that you're doing Turtles. Absolutely. As a big Turtles fan, I'm very happy to see this. And Donnie looks incredible here, so that looks awesome. Yeah, yeah. We're really, really excited about that one. And the fact that we were able to keep it like secret from everyone and yeah. have a really big you know, reveal for Toy Fair is important. Yeah, um, for sure. And then since you mentioned video games, uh, our video game appearance line, which is like 15 figures deep. We have yeah. Contra here, and uh, a new one with Konami that we kept secret as well is Castlevania. Castlevania. I gotta say, I just wanna throw this out there, it's really funny, I'm so happy to see that, but you'll probably remember when we were talking about the Contra figures when I revealed them, you let me do the reveal, yep. and I emailed you right away and I said, what about Castlevania? You guys did Castlevania figures a few years ago, can you do the same thing? And, and the whole, you knew the whole time. Yeah, I did, <laughs> I did. I do overshare sometimes, yeah. but occasionally I can keep my mouth yeah. shut. So yeah, um, yeah, it's awesome. Um, we have some of his accessories with him here, but there's a whole arsenal of stuff. Oh, that's so cool. Um, so the picture should be on our website, and we're soliciting retail for it soon. But he's got, you know, the whip. He's got the bat. He's got the flea man. He's got the boomerang. Um, it's loaded, so it's so it's real cool. And in that classic packaging, you can't go wrong. That's great. So many exciting things. So I love that, that you're, you're finally able to do some actual like video game characters. Yeah. Do you guys have more plans to kind of keep going in that direction with that line? Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, up to Contra, everything had been like movie adaptations, right. you know, in game form. Um, but I wanted to start to get into some of those games that we all played that weren't from a movie. Like you said, like Contra and Castlevania are two great examples. There's a few others that we're close to or negotiating for right now. Uh, all sticking in that same time period, you know, late 80s or early 90s, the okay. classic, the 8-bit and the dawn of the 16-bit era. You know, there's just so many cool things there that never been done in toys. And we all played those games, and some of us still play them. You know? Right, absolutely. So, yeah, there's definitely more to come. Excellent. It's a line that I've been loving, and it's just getting more and more exciting. So I can't wait to see what else you guys have coming. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. And then uh, on the modern gaming front, we're going strong. You know, we've got a lot of stuff going on with Sony, which is cool. So we have... Uh, Ultimate Kratos from God of War 3, it's about to hit retail. Uh, we have Uncharted 4, Nathan Drake, which comes out in uh, May. And then uh, Little Big Planet's doing really well, so we have some more of those here on display too. Excellent, very cool. And yeah, that Kratos looks amazing, by the way. He's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's one we wanted to do way back when, and uh, finally we've been able to uh, you know, get back in with Sony and get some of that stuff out. And uh, looking at some of their other titles, you know, I see they're bringing Crash Bandicoot back, which is really cool. So, so cool. yeah, there's some great stuff there. Um, you know, and also in the modern gaming side, we do a lot with Blizzard. Our Heroes of the Storm line was a big hit last year, and people really have gotten behind that. So uh, we're sculpting three new figures right now from that, and we have the current stuff on display and are kind of announcing what some of the upcoming figures are. So that's going strong, too. That is very cool. Awesome. Very cool stuff on the video game front. And uh, tons of new stuff sitting here. So uh, Yeah, I mean, it's, it's insane. So we've got uh, more from Pacific Rim. We're doing uh, Ultimate Gypsy Danger. The chest lights up. Nice. Comes with a bunch of interchangeable parts. Uh, we've got the Kaiju uh, Hardship, which we're offering um, here at Toy Fair. Uh, we have Hateful Eight, which is out now. Ash vs. Evil Dead from the Star Series. 
Um, bringing back Rocky for the 40th anniversary. Yeah, I see that. They've got a great little display here with the ring and all the characters right. in here. Uh, is the, are the figures the same as what was released before? It is a mix. So uh, some of it's reissue that are really valuable and people you know missed out before or want to get. Um, and then there's new. So in the first series, there's two Clubbers and two Rockies, and one of the Rockies is new. Okay. The second series is going to be Rocky Four based, and uh, there's a Rocky and Apollo that are new, and then the Ivan Dragos are reissued. Okay, gotcha. And they're all in new packaging, uh, the collector-friendly little window box, uh, 40th anniversary, uh, all new graphics and everything like that. Okay, very sweet. Um, then on our uh, figural doll format with the, the cloth clothing, yeah. Weird Al we announced last week. Yeah. That kind of won Toy Fair, I think, already, because there's a lot of Weird Al fans out there. Yeah. A lot. I mean, the Including guy me. has sold millions of records. I see an ugly Hawaiian shirt across the Yep, me. yep, right behind so the camera there. <laughs> people love Weird Al. He even got a sort of Weird, Weird Al like ringlet hair thing going on right now. So, yeah, Weird Al is awesome. If you've never seen him live, you should. Six times. Yeah, I love great. him. Yeah. One of the best. And what's really cool is when you go to that show, it's multi-generational. You mm -hmm. see fathers or grandfathers with their kids and their grandkids. And it's like a family, wholesome thing. And every kid gets into Weird Al at some oh, yeah. point. Yeah. So he's got like three at least generations of fans into him. Um, we did the Simpsons figure in our uh, Greatest Guest Stars of Springfield thing, and it did awesome. It was one of the best-selling ones, so it made sense. We got to do more with Al, and Al was totally on board. So, so cool. this is just the beginning. Full line oh, of cool. famous Al parodies oh, will be coming so cool. um, later this fall and then into next year. So uh, sky's the limit which is oh, awesome. Man, that is exciting stuff. I didn't realize you guys were doing more than just the, yeah. the standard Al, so that's really cool to hear. Yeah, we're starting off with just like the personality of Weird Al Yankovic, and you get both heads, his modern look and his classic, and an accordion, because you have to have the you accordion. Have the accordion. Yeah. Um, totally, but then, uh, yeah, then it's parodies from here on out, so we're, we're working on four right now, and it's going to be a mix of the more modern stuff that the younger kids know, and then the more classic you know, stuff that we grew up with in the 80s. Oh, that is exciting. Very cool stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then speaking of that format in the 80s, we have Bill and Ted, which is oh. awesome. So we have Bill and Ted in a Wild Stallions two-pack, and they also come with a cardboard phone booth that you can fold out and assemble to display with That's them, which is real cool. Um, and in that format, continuing with the horror stuff, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, uh, Captain Spaulding from House of a Thousand Corpses, um, and we're doing more Freddies and more Jasons and all the good stuff we're known for uh, in the latter half of the year as we head towards the fall and towards Halloween. Very cool. Yeah, that's a great little line for them, and it fits that kind of stuff perfectly. And I really feel like that format works so well with stuff like Bill and Ted and Weird Al, and I just I really love seeing what you guys are doing with that line. Yeah, thank you. It's cool because not everything works as a traditional figure. It's nice right. to kind of have that differentiation in the line and separate it out. We do different packaging with them, sometimes yeah. a lot of custom artwork, so that stuff's real cool. Awesome. So what else we got? We got some more uh, quarter scale yeah. stuff back here that looks pretty awesome. Yeah, we have a lot of new quarter scale on display um, from Marvel and DC. So on the DC front, we have a Harley Quinn, which was a surprise for Toy Fair from Arkham City. Yeah. Uh, we have the, the Bale Batman from Batman Begins, and we have the Dawn of Justice Batman from the new film. Um, all those are hitting uh, throughout the spring and as we head towards summer, all Q2 releases. So, um, And then for Marvel, we have our quarter scale Iron Man from Age of Ultron that's shipping now. And we finally have our Hulk done, the long awaited two two plus years in the making. He is massive. I mean, he is just really, really incredible looking. And he's wearing his uh, Age of Ultron type pants that I see yeah. there. Yeah, sort of little gym stretchy shorts. Yeah. Yeah, those are not the final shorts, so um, they will get tweaked a little bit. The accent colors are darker in the final film and like little subtle things that have to be finalized. But the figure himself mm -hmm. is final. He's two feet tall, fully articulated, and uh, two sets of hands. Um, we have a bunch of pictures up now online for everyone to check out with him with Thor and Cap oh, and yeah. Iron Man. So you can see how freaking massive he is. Because it's not just that he's two feet tall, he's just so big and so badass. And for me, it's just an achievement to say, we made a figure that's literally two feet tall. And it's detailed, it's not right. like some roto-molded or blow-molded, you know, uh, statuesque yeah, yeah, swivel, exactly. swivel cut thing. It's, it's some, you know, it's just a badass green hole. So cool looking. Now I do want to ask, like, is it at all possible to ever see him get like some of the classic pants in like a reissue or re-release for fans that might want to display just a classic looking Hulk figure? Yeah, I mean that's certainly certainly possible. I kind of want to wait and see will people support this at the higher price, and I right. think they will because even for the size of it, the price is really reasonable. I've right. seen it retailing uh, for around 250, which is awesome. So yeah, we definitely would look at doing more like the tattered rip shorts yeah, and yeah, and some cool. different heads and. Uh, 
you know, definitely would be open to doing more in the future with okay. it. I mean, the Hulk's awesome and time, yeah, absolutely. timeless. So. Absolutely. Very cool. Yeah. All right. What else we got over here that's new? Uh, we have uh, Ultimate uh, Terminator from the original 84 yeah. film. So we did Ultimate T2 stuff last year. It did really well. We're going back to 84 and doing uh, the Tech Noir Terminator. Um, the Ultimate line has been really popular. It packs everything in one set so that good, everyone yeah. wants. Um, so we're doing the 84 film in the first half of the year, and then we're going to go back to Judgment Day in the latter half of the year because they're bringing it back to theaters, 25th anniversary, oh, cool. and a 3D conversion. Oh. So it'll be out around September or October, and uh, we're going to have some more stuff to show you guys at San Diego Comic-Con from that. Exciting. Things to look forward to, and I love it. No eyebrows uh, Terminator yeah, over here. That's great. That's right. <laughs> um, and then we have, of course, Alien and Predator, the bread and butter. Always, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're deep in here, like uh, 16 series of Predator right now that we're showing. Uh, series 16 is all Kenner. Yes! It is the best Kenner wave yet, and it may be one of the best Predator waves yet. Yeah? Yeah, it's unbelievable. We have Spike Tail. We have uh, Stalker, which glows in the dark. Um, we have one called Ghost, which is a, a obscure sort of white version of the Jungle Hunter, which was in, like, the later... KB only days of oh, the line. Okay, okay. And then most importantly, last but not least, the clan leader. Oh. He was a deluxe figure in the original line. Yes. He's a deluxe figure in our line, and that thing is sick. Bendable tendrils. Yeah. They attach to his armor or his gauntlets. Okay. Removable masks on all of the Kenner Predators in this series. The white dreadlocks. The clan leaders are biggest and baddest predator yet. Oh, that is exciting. I love the Kenner stuff, so very much looking forward to those. Yeah, it's awesome to see, uh, you know, how cool. We've done 10 different Kenner predators at this point, so we're getting yeah. to the point where we're covering almost all of them. All of them yeah. you got to now go to the stuff that was either unreleased uh, or some of the stuff that's shown up in, like, old Tomart issues and stuff right, like that, right, you know, yeah. the obscure, like, oh, some Kenner designer started this way back when kind of thing. So it's, it's really cool. And then we're doing some video game stuff with Predator 2. We have the oh. deluxe Scarface from Concrete Jungle, nice. which was a big game back in 05. So Predator just no, you know, no slowing down at all. Awesome. It's awesome. awesome. And then Alien, it's a big year for Alien. The 30th anniversary of Aliens is this summer, the Cameron movie. Excellent. So we're going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff around that, including a dedicated series. Uh, series 9 is all Aliens 30th. But we're not showing those to you yet. Oh, we're not going to show those oh. until probably April or May. Okay. But we are showing uh, Series 8 here, which is uh, Alien 3 base. It's mm -hmm. all new figures of uh, Ripley from the prison colony, the shaved head. Uh, she's got a removable jacket and two sets of arms. So you can have her in the tank top or the coat. we got Sweet. the Wayland dutani Commandos, which are totally badass and great army builders. And then we're bringing back the dog alien, uh, which people want more of. And uh, we're doing a creature pack, which we're showing some of here, which yeah. has like face huggers, chest bursters, uh, the burster. It's got the little stasis chamber that lights up, and you can take the face hugger in or out of it. You can fill it with water. It's it's real cool. We have a quarter scale aliens warrior from Aliens. We have a quarter scale predator that just hit with the lights and the mask and in the gauntlet. Um, yeah, it's it's just awesome. And we have. At this point, back in the studio, we have two more series of Aliens done, including Series 10, which is Kenner. Oh, there it is. I've been waiting for the Kenner Alien yeah, so stuff. Kenner nice. This fall. Yeah. Um, we're working on something uh, for the end of April that is going to be a surprise uh, figure that's just going to drop. Yeah? Yeah. Because oh. uh, there's sort of this grassroots movement to create an Alien Day. So you know how there's like unofficially May the 4th is like Star Wars yeah, Day? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, we've been talking about this. A lot of fans are talking about it. There's an Instagram. There's a hashtag. There's a Twitter for Alien Day to be 426, like LV426. Nice. So April 26th, there's going to be a lot of Alien stuff happening. So oh, definitely stay cool. tuned. Oh, I like it. Definitely. Very exciting stuff. Wow, so Predator and Alien still going strong. You guys have a ton of new stuff here. And a lot of surprises, which is great. Always love seeing surprises. Um, and speaking of that, I wanted to talk about like some of the surprises you dropped on us just recently, like those uh, awesome DC figures that hit stores. You had like the Ledger Joker and the Reeves Superman, and that went along great with the Keaton Batman that we already had. Um, is there anything else? Like, are you guys hoping to do more of that kind of thing in the future as well? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always hoping to. We never know because it's such a delicate balance of what we are allowed to do or how we can partner strategically with home video uh, to get some of these things out. Um, but we are looking at options uh, in the way we've done before with home video. We're also looking outside of that at maybe some of the subscription-based services that are out there. Okay. So you're getting away from the retail component that Mattel 
uh, could say object to on the DC right. front and say whether it's something from, I don't know, like a loot crate or a nerd block or someone like that, maybe we can make something work. So we, we are always looking at it. When I'm developing my quarter scale figures now with certain ones, I am also scaling them down. So I have them ready. Right. We're not tooling them, but they're going to be ready in that format so that if uh, an opportunity should arise to do a Bale Batman or the Dawn of Justice Batman or our Penguin, which was a huge hit last year, the DeVito Penguin. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I was going to say, that was one of them for sure. I would love to see you fit in yeah. with the rest of those seven-inch figures there. Absolutely, absolutely. So we, we're scaling them down and having like the resin masters ready yeah. that if and when something can happen, we can pull the trigger and do it. Um, and again, we probably keep it as secret or a surprise as we can because yeah. it's, it's become like an annual thing now where we're just dropping, uh, you know, these bombs in the fourth quarter of the year. <laughs> uh, and it's, you know, I hope we can keep doing it. For me to have, you know, I bring some of this stuff home. I, I see it at work all the time. So I try to limit the amount of toys I bring home. Yeah. But I have the Reeves and the Keaton and the Ledger and the West all in my house because it's yeah. like, I can't believe we got to make these. It's and I have so them cool, with my, right? yeah, I have them with my Marvel Legends. Yeah, and my, yeah. yeah it's, it's like, this is crazy, you know. So hopefully we can, hopefully we can do it. Very cool. I'm going to hit you with a, a harder question on those, though, too, because they're amazing figures. They had great sculpts, but there were a lot of reported breakage issues with Whoa. Superman specifically. So I wanted to kind of ask you about that and if there was anything being done to kind of rectify yeah. that. I mean, that was, you know, your typical situation where a factory in China just uh, did not let the plastic cure correctly on the first couple weeks of Superman. And we did have a lot of breakages. I, I do want to make it clear that we replaced anyone who had a problem between uh, our customer service on our site or we have a dedicated customer service on Twitter mm -hmm. and you know we would send them replacements free of charge you don't have to return the defective one or anything like that just show us what happened show us a picture we send it back to you um, and I will say that we would not use that factory again yeah. um, you know you get burned one too many times um, but we did try to make it up to anyone who had an issue uh, unfortunately there were some issues with Superman yeah. specifically in the legs and a few elbows here and there um, but again, if anyone still encounters a problem, because there are still products at retail, and we are still shipping some of them out there, uh, customer service on NECAonline.com or NECA underscore CS on Twitter, and we will replace it no problem. Awesome. Well, that's great information. Thank you for sharing that yeah. with us. And thank you for, once again, taking the time to show us all this awesome stuff. Was there anything else that we missed that you wanted yeah. to hit? Um, there's one line that I'm really happy about. Oh, okay. That it's not a figure-based line, but it's our Cinemachines line. Oh, yeah. So it's a line of vehicles. Everyone's been doing figures, tons of figures out there from all different manufacturers and all different size, scales, whatever. The vehicles get ignored. There hasn't been anything really since the days of Micro Machines and Action Fleet. So uh, we have a line of Terminator, Alien, and Predator vehicles. They sell for the same price as a figure. They're a mix of die cast and plastic. Um, they're about uh, six inches. Um, we have a bunch of them on display here. I think 10 different styles here. Um, they launched this spring, um, and they're awesome. So if you're a fan of any of those franchises, definitely check out the vehicles. Excellent. Very, very cool. Well, there's a ton of exciting things going on here. Uh, just the things that you keep surprising us with are always amazing to me. So keep up the great work, awesome product, and thank you for once again taking the time to walk us through all of this awesome stuff in here. My pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Well, there you go, guys. A look at what's on display at the NECA Toys booth at the 2016 New York Toy Fair. Stay tuned right here to Pixel Dan for more coverage of the events. Stay up to date with Pixel Dan at Toy Fair 2016. Follow at Pixel Dan on Twitter or forward slash Mandalorian30 on YouTube.com. Thanks for tuning in to your premier source for all things toys, Pixel Dan. See you again.